Now that we've opened the application, we can create our new project. Let's start by naming the project. From this drop-down, we can choose from a predefined list of frame sizes. But for this video, I will go with a custom frame size, 620 by 620. For the animation duration, I will go with, let's say, 3 seconds at 60 FPS. Click on create project and there you go. We have created a new project. In Expressive Animator, you can choose to create your own vector assets and animate them. But if you have already existing work and you want to import it and animate it, you can do so because Expressive Animator supports SVG files, PNG, JPEG, PDF, and Adobe Illustrator files. But in this video, I want to show you how to import vector assets from Figma and animate them in Expressive Animator. So let's go in Figma. Now that we are in Figma, we'll have to select our illustration. But before copying it as SVG, we have to do one more thing. We'll go to the export settings and choose to check this option, include ID attribute. Otherwise, it won't import with the names and groups. Now let's right click and copy as SVG. Let's go back in Expressive Animator. And now that we are here, we can choose to press Ctrl V to paste the illustration, or we can right click and choose the paste option from the menu. But before I start animating this illustration, I will have to clean it up a bit. So I will take this group outside the clip pad. We don't need the clip pad anymore, so we will delete it. And now we can ungroup this group. So we have only the elements that we need. We can rename this like illustration. And now we can start animating. In Expressive Animator, there are two ways to animate your objects. You can do it automatically and manually. In order to animate automatically, let's create an object. To animate this object, we will click on the record button and then go on the one second mark on the timeline. Now, every action we do on this object, it will reflect on the timeline and it will add the appropriate animators for it. For example, if we choose to change its position, it will reflect in the timeline. If we choose to rotate it, of course, it will add the rotate animator and of course, many other properties. For example, the fill color, the stroke and so on. Now, let's try to animate it manually. First, I will disable the record button. And now I will go here and add an animator. For example, the position. I will go the same on the one second mark and move it. Of course, we can add so many other properties. Now, let's go back to animating the initial illustration. For this animation, I want this scribble to draw itself, so I will select it and set the dash and gap to be 100. For the dash offset, I will set it to be 100 and for the path length, I will set it to be 100%. For more information about the path length options, you can hover over this icon. But for now, let's keep it at 100%. Now I will go to the three seconds mark, click the record button and now I will edit this dash offset to be zero. So now we can preview this effect. As you can see, it goes from the dash offset 100 to dash offset zero. Now I want this pencil to follow along this self-drawing path. To do that, 
I will first disable the record button, select the pencil, and if I hold control or command, I can move this anchor point around. For this example, I will click and hold here and set it to the bottom left corner. Now I will move the pencil over here where the scribble starts and I will animate it. I will go to the frame 36, click on the record button because for this example it's much much easier to auto record the position animator. For example, I will drag it here and as you can see it created a motion path. Let's see it which you can, of course, edit. You can curve it, and of course you can add more points to it and so on, but that is for another video. I will speed up a bit the video, and I will see you when I finish this animation. Now that I've finished creating the motion path, let's preview the animation. That's really, really nice. Let's see it again. Now let's talk about easing functions. In Expressive Animator, the default easing function is set to linear but we can change that really, really easy. For this example, I will choose to enter this group's context. In order to enter a group's context or an object context, you can press the enter button on your keyboard or double click on the object or group. Now that we've entered the swatch group's context, I will select this ellipse and for this example, I want the snapping option enabled. Now, I will go to the one second mark on the timeline and drag the ellipse down. So, because I want this ellipse to act like a ball and bounce, I will set its easing function to bounce. In Expressive Animator, there are three ways to open the easing editor. The first way is to select a keyframe and click on this button and it will open the easing editor. The second way is to double click on a keyframe to open the easing editor. And the third way is to double click on a keyframe bar to open the easing editor. In the easing editor, the easing types come with their own easing options. For example, the Bezier allows you to manipulate the handles so you can create all kinds of easing functions, even overshoots like this. With this control, you can zoom in and zoom out. Of course, you can do that with the middle mouse button by scrolling. Now let's go to the bounce settings. By default, it's set to three bounces and stiffness of one. I will leave it by default and let's see how it plays. Let's see it again. And again. That's really nice. And that's how you edit the easing functions in Expressive Animator. That's it for this video. If you learned something, consider liking it and subscribing. And also, if you want, you can share it with your friends and co-workers. I will see you in the next video.